Hello, my fellow Freedom Builders, and welcome to a very quick recap of the Tesla battery day from yesterday. Um, not many of you, I guess, were watching it uh, all day or all night long, depending on where you live. So I have decided to watch a lot of hours of Tesla battery day and uh, just note the, the biggest thing from my perspective that they came out with. Now, first of all, a lot of people have expected a lot from the Tesla battery day, including me. But I have gotten a sense that a lot of people were kind of expecting that Elon Musk had learned to walk on water or to fly by himself or something like that. People were expecting purely insane stuff. And therefore, after the, the battery day and after they, they announced all the new stuff, um, the, the stock price tanked a bit, not dramatically, but it fell. And that was at a big surprise for many shorter term, maybe retail investors. Now, this is very normal when there has been a huge build up of expectations. And then it is hard to meet these expectations. I were out saying it yesterday that I would actually expect the Tesla stock to go down like something five to 10% simply because the expectations were so high that they were pretty much impossible to meet. So let me give you a few minutes of a walkthrough what I think was the biggest takeaway from the uh, Tesla battery day, because in my opinion, there were some huge things. Um, however, there were not this magical stuff where they came up with one invention that could really revolutionize the world. But in my opinion, Tesla at this battery day event showed us that they are a mature and responsible company. They don't overpromise. Uh, they have realistic timelines and actually what they're doing is amazing. But let me just uh, go through it. First of all, uh, due to all of this virus stuff, it was held at a parking lot where Elon and uh, different partners were on stage and uh, all the invited people were sitting in their cars, of course, Tesla cars, and um, they were honking the horn every time uh, Elon said something they liked. Now, I will give you a quick bullet point of what I think is uh, the main takeaway, but let me just give you one slide that pretty much sums it all up. Now, here we go. This is one of the slides from the Tesla Live presentations. I simply just took a screenshot. I hope Elon don't mind here. But what you can see here is uh, stacking up the benefits of Tesla's vertical integration. And uh, in the last couple of videos, I have mentioned this vertical integration, but it simply just means that you are in control of the entire value process from the beginning to the end. So uh, that is pretty much where uh, Tesla is going now. And as you can see, they have three main uh, headlines here. They have range increase. And I should say right away that this is not uh, something that they will reach today or tomorrow. Uh, and that is also one of the reasons why the stock price fell back a bit, because people had expected something really revolutionizing right now. But what they came up with was actually revolutionizing. It was just in two to three years. But I think they are very realistic and I really like that they are not just over promising like some companies in this space without naming any names, of course. So um, we have the range increase. They actually are going for a range increase of 54% uh, in a few years, which is amazing. But what I think is a strong thing from Tesla is that they're not just coming up with one new revolutionizing battery tech and saying it is this tech that is gonna revolutionize everything and increase uh, range by 54%. No, this is more like a process. You can see there is a cell design. There is the anode material, the, ca the cathode material, and the cell vehicle integration. Uh, and, and this means that if they were just coming up with one patented idea, then it would have been fairly easy for competitors to try to copy them and steal some of the concepts. But what they are actually doing is that they are improving the entire process in the production line if, uh, on, on the Teslas, meaning that it is not easy for some Chinese company just to go in and say, yeah, we'll just uh, open up the battery, see how it's built and then copy it in our own market. They would simply have to copy the entire manufacturing process uh, to compete with this. And that 
makes this very amazing, I think. Then there's the uh, dollar amount per kilowatt hour. Uh, the reduction will be 56%. Also, cell design, cell factory, anode, cathode, and cell vehicle integration. So, uh, and this cell vehicle integration, I'll, I'll just mention that a bit earlier in, in the bullet point part. But a 56% reduction in the dollar per kilowatt hour, that is revolutionizing in itself. Also, remember that this is just for the cars, but all of these uh, technology improvements uh, spill over into all of the other of Tesla's uh, products. Uh, th that could be the solar panel, the power wall. Uh, it could be uh, pretty much everything they do. Uh, they can they can benefit benefit from these uh, manufacturing improvements. Uh, then we have investments per gigawatt hour uh, reduction. 69%, which actually means that they can set up their gigawatt factories uh, and terawatt factories uh, in the future with 69% reduction in cost. And that is really something that I think will put a, a huge pressure on the competitors because uh, focusing on this part, I think it is really intentional from uh, Elon Musk and his team beaten exactly uh, for the point I mentioned before that it is getting a lot harder for competitors to go in and compete with them because they might come up with a with a good uh, battery their competitors but if they don't have the right manufacturing processes then it can be very expensive to set up these plants to produce the, the factories and that is where I think Tesla is getting a huge advantage in the future. Now for the bullet points, and as I've said, I have seen through several hours today of this and taking a bunch of notes, and these are just the main points. I might have missed some because I'm not a Tesla expert for so, and uh, some of you out there that are battery experts or car experts, you might have uh, have some points that I actually missed. But you can write them in the comment section below and I'll have a look at them. So here, uh, here's a, a number of my takeaways from the battery day. First of all, they are expecting a 30 to 40 percent growth in sales in 2020, and that is in a year where a lot of the competitors are actually uh, have dropping sales due to the the virus and 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 the downturn in the economy. Then uh, Elon Musk and Tesla they are expecting 30 to 40 percent growth. That is in itself amazing. Uh, then they talked uh, some in the beginning about the the, uh, the safety part, the entire autopilot, uh, the the step to become a self-driving vehicle, and uh, they are actually down in the safety reports now. So they are logging uh, 0.3 accidents or or mi minor accidents, some of them per million miles driven uh, with this autopilot, and that is compared to a 2.1 accident per million miles driven uh, normally in United States, as far as I could tell. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is the numbers, uh, but I might have mistaken uh, some of these. But it is a significantly lower number than when people just drive the cars by themselves. Then there was a seven times increase in, in production per line, meaning that they have, uh, they have really put some lean work into the production lines. And as I said, when they are up and running with this, and that is fairly quickly, when they have a 7x increase in their production per line, it actually is the same as saying that a normal factory uh, can produce the same as if they were producing six or seven new manufacturing plants, and then they can get the same output out from one. And that is truly, truly amazing. Then they are, uh, right now in 2020, they are producing uh, batteries with the total uh, of, of 100 gigawatt hour uh, here this year, 2020. And they are expecting maybe before 2030, but at least in 2030 to uh, to get up to three terawatt hours. Um, that is 30 times the amount that they are actually producing right now so they will uh, they will 30x their production in in what hours per year uh, from 2020 to 2030 at the latest 
Then they were talking about them uh, getting their own lithium. They have uh, they have purchased ten thousand acres of land uh, in Nevada where they can get the the, the lithium out with some new uh, process they're using. So they're leaving the land pretty untouched afterwards. Uh, they were talking about that. Then there was the recycling part. They have been doing a bit of the recycling on, of batteries, but. Uh, they are taking that home now. It has been at third parties before that were taking all sorts of different batteries in. But Tesla is taking that home to themselves now and just focusing on their own material. And that also means that they can cut the cost of the new batteries because they can recycle some of the materials from their own batteries. This part is also one of the things that environmentalists and, and, and critics of the EV space are saying about uh, the, the EV sector right now, and that is, yeah, well, it is still polluting a lot because uh, all of the batteries are uh, for, with a lot of different materials in. That is not good for the nature. So they are taking on this now, and I think this can be a part where they can be competitive in the future if they really get this up and running because a lot of the competitors do not have uh, their, their entirely own infrastructure to uh, to build the batteries and to recycle them. Then a very exciting new thing is what they call the structural battery. That actually means that they are building the battery into the structure of the car. They were comparing it to planes where uh, today you actually have the, the, the wings on the plane is actually the fuel tanks just formed as wings. And that is pretty much what they are doing with the cars. They are simply uh, shaping the structure of the car with their battery cells and it gives them a lot of advantages that can pack them tighter and they can actually make the, the car structure a lot better by using the batteries this way. So that is also very exciting. Um, yeah, I have, I've ridden 20 vehicles per year in production. Uh, that should have been uh, 20 million vehicles per year. That is what they are aiming for uh, in a few years that they will have um, a production uh, factories that can produce 20 million vehicles per year. The last thing I have jotted down is that within the next three years, they are, they are planning to come up with a uh, EV that only costs uh, two, uh, sorry, $25,000, which is very, very affordable for most people. And uh, that will have a range of 300 miles, which is pretty much enough for 90-95% uh, of uh, the everyday transportation in EVs. So, of course, I live in Denmark, so this will be a lot more expensive in Denmark. So $25,000 is probably for the, uh, the US market. Um, I'm not 100% certain, but I can say that when this is introduced in Denmark, you can time this by two or three or four, something like that. So we have expensive cars, but that is how it is. That is my takeaway from the battery day. As I said, I might have missed something, but uh, if you think I have missed something important, put it in the comment section below. Every time you put a comment under one of my videos, you are participating in our little competition for these one ounce silver coins. So uh, I am finding a new winner tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So make sure you comment, like, hit the subscribe button, all the buttons you can find down there. That's all for now. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.